Hello and welcome to the Centre for Computing History. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at another machine that's come in recently. And for this one, we've got to thank a gentleman by the name of Paul Hopkins, who has donated not only the machine, but a very nice selection of games. The games will be going into our collection. We don't have any of these, so it's really, really excellent. We do actually have a VC6000 in the collection already. So this one will be used for handling. The difference between the collection one, that's our nice pristine one in its box upstairs. This one has suffered over the years a little bit of damage. So basically it's had its cables wrapped around its case. And over the years, the PVC cables have reacted with the ABS case. So the PVC cable has a lot of things in it to keep it nice and flexible. That has done a chemical reaction with the case and actually done what we call cable burn and it's actually burnt into the case. Princetronic were the one of the brand names of the Dixons group and they produced as well as other little home consoles such as this, they did Pong consoles, they also did an awful lot of calculators. The Princetronic tournament VC6000 came out in 1978 it's based on exactly the same technology as the Radofin 1292, which was conceived a couple of years before. Radofin licensed the technology to a lot of other companies, uh, as well as Prince Tronic. It went to Hanimex, Grandstand, and a few others. And it's a nice early example of a little cartridge machine. All the machines, exactly the same technology. A lot of them look like this. Others had completely different cases, and the only thing that stopped any of them being compatible with each other was the shape of the cartridge. Internally, they had all had the same CPU. They had the Signetix 2850 processor. This had about 4K of RAM and apparently four kilobits of video memory. The machine has the off and on switch. It has the load program, we'll come to in a second. Game select button and then the start button. On the rear of the console, the controllers are actually built in, and then we have the socket that goes out to the TV. This one is slightly more basic in that this socket here would have been if you would have had a light gun peripheral. This particular model doesn't have that. The controller, analog joystick, very, very precise movement, and then it has 12 buttons that perform various functions. Some of the titles here have this little overlay that you'll put on there, which actually has specific commands for the actual games. So let's give some of the games a go. The first one is going to be Invaders. So when you turn the machine on, you get this rather hideous white noise until you press the load button. You actually have to load the cartridge into the memory. Get a nice little gunshot noise, not quite sure why. And then you can go through press the game select and it will give you very slight variations on the Space Invaders theme, for instance, here. Um, but I think we're gonna go straight into the game here. Here we go. And you'll notice it doesn't look exactly like Space Invaders because the machine can only have a certain amount of characters per line. So, it actually does take some getting used to this joystick. It's uh, also, it's uh, not the easiest version of Space Invaders I've ever played. There we go. There we go, to try and coke out the UFO. No, missed it. Now these machines, they still use really the old Pong style scoring, so at the end of the game I'll just get one number up of how well I did. And you can see all the, as the UFOs have got lower, it's actually got rid of the buildings. It's going to sound like an excuse as well, but really these fire buttons, I think I'm getting one successful press in four. Oh. So sound wise, it's another Signetics chip that does the sound as well. 
actually relatively authentic to the... Oh my word, now we're speeding up. Relatively authentic to the original arcade machine. See if I can clear the screen once before we move on. Oh. Well, that was a satisfying noise. Come on, let's see if we can do this. Yes. Ah, pleased with that. Right, so that's Space Invaders. Let's try something else. Very reassuring clunk of the cartridge there. Let's have a go at Air Sea Attack. Now, when I was on holiday in 1978, I think it was, I used to go up to Trimmingham in Norfolk, where they had an arcade machine there, which was Depth Charge, the first game I ever played. So, um, this does remind me somewhat of Depth Charge. So, uh, move my little ship along the top here and drop my Depth Charge into the sea here and not hit anything, which is a... Uh, Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, I've, I've only got 11 things to drop here, so... Uh, I don't think I'm going to score heavily here. That's, I seem to be missing everything. Oh, there we go. So I think those fast-moving ones are meant to be mines. And then we just have various f speeds of submarine moving down below. So... Depth Charge, where I used to play it on holiday, used to take about 50p a go, which back in 1978 was absolutely extortionate. So uh, there's other variations of the game here as well, if I can actually... So I'm supposed to have a game select here. So And it just does different variations here. So I think now I'm going to have two ships, or it might be two players. Is that really what that's doing? Oh yes, so it is. So I could have joined a second player in, but here in these socially distancing times, I'll have to play them both. And I can just... Does definitely lack depth charges very it's got this brilliant sonar noise in the background, but this is never going to hope to get near that. And there's the score for the two players. 22-0. That takes me back to my youth slightly. Okay, let's try one more. We're going to go for... Shooting Gallery. Okay, so... Judging by its cover, it looks like to be some sort of clay pigeon shooting or another. So, um, right. Well, there's somebody at the bottom of the screen there that looks like they are holding a bazooka rather than... All oh, right, so I can take out the local wildlife by the look of it. This is one of these games where this mode, I literally just stand in one spot by the look of it, so. Don't know if I've got infinite ammo here. Or... For a machine of 1978 vintage, it's, the character's quite nice and uh, you certainly move them across the screen fast enough as well, because I think the process is something like 3 megahertz or something like that. Scored 9 points, right, okay. Let's reload it. Now, let's take it so I can actually move the character. Each cartridge has a lot of variations of the same game, so this shooting gallery has 32 games on it. All very, very similar, and it's much like the games are set up on the cartridges of the Atari VCS. Okay, number 17. Here we go. Right, I can now move. Uh, doesn't appear to make me any better of a shot. Oh dear. I want to get one of the fast moving ones, but I'm not... Oh. Oh dear me. 
Ha, got it. The little guy at the bottom of the screen moves pretty smoothly, as do all the other little characters, which is pretty impressive for a machine of this age. So that's it. That's the Prince Tronic Tournament VC6000. Thanks very much again to Paul Hopkins for donating it to our collection. If you have any machines yourselves that you no longer need and think would fit well with our collection, then please do get in touch with us via our website. And if you want to help us carry on making these videos, please consider supporting us on Patreon. And thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.